Hello, it's Duke here, and I'm here to talk about a game called Kieko TK or Hockey TK. Kieko or Hockey is a Java based game created by Finnish brothers Joko and Mikko Pundonen. It is a fairly simple hockey game from a top down perspective where the player is controlled entirely with a mouse. Unlike in most hockey games where the entire team is controlled by one player, in Kieko a team consists of up to 3 to 5 players per team where only the goaltender is computer controlled. The rules of the game are familiar to anyone who has seen or played a real hockey match. A player is offside when they cross the opposing team's blue line before the puck. Icing is called when the puck goes from one end of the ring to the other. Disrupting the goaltender is also whistled, although in training rooms there is no penalty. This also means that you can block and tackle players to your heart's content. In actual team matches, it is possible to decide whether you want penalties or not. A single period lasts for 5 minutes, with training rooms only having one, and team matches the usual three. Gameplay. Individual gameplay can be divided into six categories. Maneuvering and puck control, shooting and passing, wrist shots, and blocking. In order to move around, you simply have to move your cursor in the desired direction your character will follow. However, bearing in mind that you are on ice, acceleration, deceleration and turning are handled accordingly. When you are holding the puck, your movement speed is slowed down slightly. The puck is attached to your stick, which can be moved around at a certain angle by moving the cursor. This is what adds an element of skill to the game, because you will be able to move the puck one way while going the other way in order to trick an opponent. Shooting is done by holding down the left mouse button to power up the shot, and letting go at the right moment to deliver it. This can be used for scoring goals or long range passes, but can also be used as a short pass to yourself in order to move quicker or deceive other players. The closer the cursor is to you, the higher the puck will fly, and the further it is for you, the lower the shot will be. Shooting backwards will reduce the power significantly and should only be used for deking. When you're holding down the left mouse button, you will be unable to move and your character will retain the same speed and direction you had at the moment of clicking. When you want to pass, all you have to do is right click. This is called auto passing because it will be directed to the player closest to your cursor without the need to aim too accurately. While this form of passing is the quickest, it can be easily intercepted, which is why a power shot is more useful for longer passes. Another thing to note is that auto passes do not always keep up with your teammates' movements and can miss if there is a sudden change in direction. The right mouse button is also used for performing wrist shots, which only occur when you are close to the opposing team's goal. What you have to do is hold down right mouse button to prepare the wrist shot. Your character will then move up to where the cursor was when you press the right mouse button and stop there until you release it. Once you take an aim, you can let go of the right mouse button. It is much the same as performing a power shot, but the difference is wrist shots have the same amount of power in them every time and thus can be fired quicker. Another benefit is that you will keep the puck further away from you, allowing you to easily reach past the goaltender and score a goal. The only downside is that you have to aim inside the goal with the cursor, or the game will think you want to auto pass, which can lead to some embarrassing results. Fortunately, there is an option to turn off wrist shots if you feel like you don't need it. Blocking. Blocking is used for tackling opponents, either to steal the puck or keep them away from it. It can also be used to intercept the puck when it flies high or to obstruct a goaltender's vision of the puck. You can block by holding down the right mouse button when you do not have the puck. While blocking, you turn slower and cannot use your stick to pick up the puck. In games where penalties are enabled, it is also possible to hook other players by spamming block. This is a good way to steal the puck, but can also result in time on the bench. Once you have mastered all the aforementioned aspects of the game, you can start working on proper team play. Apart from the training rooms, the game has also an inbuilt team system that allows you to create your own team from scratch or join an existing one. Teams can then challenge each other in 3 vs 3, 4 vs 4 or 5 vs 5 matches. Since you will be working with other players much like you would in real life, success comes from good teamwork. If you've trained long and hard enough with your team, 
you can get some pretty enjoyable games. If you find that the team is not for your liking, it is possible to leave the team and look for others. It's important to note that when you apply for a team, you should have a specific role in mind that you are going to play. Some teams look for attackers, while others may be short on defenders. The most common team compositions in 3v3 are two attackers and one defender. In 4v4 it can vary from two defenders and two attackers to one defender and three attackers. However, if you're desperate for a goal, you can pull the goalie out and swap him for an extra player on the rink. In order to create a team, you will need one credit. Credits are bought either through credit card order or mobile services. What these credits unlock are listed in the VIP section of the Kyokotike website. These services can vary from team creation to changing your team's logo, jersey or home arena. You can also purchase a 40-day power user benefit that allows you access to a personal practice room where you can play by yourself against a cold tender to perfect your scoring skills. In the game there are certain rankings which define your personal or your team's achievements. New players start off as novices and as time passes you will move up from amateur to pro to elite. All these ranks signify the amount of hours you put into playing that character. The game also keeps track of all the goals and assists you have acquired, which team you were playing on when you acquired them and also statistics of your gameplay. A separate personal ranking is included in the so-called order play system. Your ranking goes up or down based on how well your last order play match went. Using the information, it selects players of equal ranking from a lobby and puts them into a balanced match. Team rankings themselves are listed separately depending on category, i.e. 3v3, 4v4 or 5v5. The top 100 teams are listed on the website and it also shows whether they've been going up or down in rankings recently. Some high ranking games are also automatically recorded giving players the opportunity to vote for their favourite goals for this week's top 10. These can be viewed on the game's website. Community the player base in Europe is around 30,000 registered users, with the majority being in Finland. In the West, there are roughly over a thousand in both the US and Canada, although how many of these are active players I can say. What Kikos offers from is common for many team-based games. Because of the nature of the game where your enjoyment is tied to the ability of others to play the game, it's easy to get frustrated. That is why it can be an unwelcome environment for new players who get bullied into leaving matches if they do not meet certain standards. What the players themselves have to come up with is a league system, like in real sports, where teams with a high enough ranking can apply to join. Matches are then scheduled via IRC or the league's own website. Kiko is completely free to play. The gameplay holds surprising death when it comes to building tactics and learning new tricks. It all comes down to how you handle your own character rather than an inbuilt skill system. At best, the game is going to make you feel like you're really playing hockey. However, sometimes you'll see something that reminds you that it's just a game. A very important factor for such a high-paced game is your internet connection. A player with 10 ping gets a significant advantage over those with 50, let alone 100 ping, and the delay of a pass can cost you a goal. That is why those closest to either the Finnish server or the one in USA, New Jersey, get the best enjoyment out of this game. One of the biggest issues the game has is the wide skill gap between players. Because of this, many do not find players of their own skill level to play with. It's a two-bladed sword. On one hand, you have existing players who look for games that have a high skill level and don't have patience for newcomers. 
and there are those who have only just started and hardly get a chance to touch the puck because they cannot keep up. This is why autoplay system was introduced to put players of certain skill in the same game rooms. The system is not perfect, but it's a step in the right direction. If you want to try this game, I would suggest you bring friends along with you because it certainly helps giving everyone a chance to shine. Don't be discouraged if things don't go smoothly at first. It will take time to learn all there is to know about the game, but when you do, it is especially rewarding.